phenomenal. Rise is phenomenal. Rise is unique in the recovery community of Glasgow. Coming here, I uh, watched other people grow and get better in their recovery. Uh, and I started opening up slowly but surely. Rise does a lot. These people are safer. People are a place of safety, um, happiness. They leave here on a Saturday, a total different way than they came in on a Saturday morning. It was a stage in my life that when I was coming out the door I was suffering from panic attacks. That's how bad it was. Then you get a connection and the people in here is like a family because you see them on a week to week basis. So you'll see people coming in shut down and to the point that they're up in the karaoke singing. Now I got up in karaoke and sing. Right, and to somebody that never had the ability to hold eye to eye contact with someone, to somebody that can go up and sing in front of a camera, there's something working, you know, in here. It's really good and I really enjoy it. Rise is a recovery cafe that we facilitate on a Saturday morning. Then we go into the recovery talk, then we have lunch, then we've got acupuncture going on, we've got massages going on, we've got a bingo going on, we've got a hairdresser coming in. Uh, there's really a lot to go on. I love it. I love. I would love the day to be longer. Benefit people get from coming to places like Rise is the recovery first and foremost. But um, they get a new social circle. They get friends. They get like-minded people. So, well, today we're having chicken fajitas made by Imwa <laughs> with homemade chicken uh, and rice soup. Uh, which people seem to enjoy. Uh, I think they really enjoy the cooking. They come along here, they feel part of, they can sit around the table, take part and listen to each other's problems and try and get to the of solutions to that kind of stuff. And that's what we try to aim for here at Rise Recovery Cafe. It could be the only meal that somebody gets that week and it's a home cooked meal. It's not at the box or something at the freezer. It's made for scratch and it's a good portion dinner. And that, if that's all that somebody gets, then I'm happy. Well, me personally, I, I came here, I think, about a month, month and a half after it opened, and I always thought at the beginning that Rise was part of ad action, because it seemed as if you'd done your CBT training and all that ad action, and then you moved on to Rise, it was like a stepping stone kind of thing. It's, it just seemed as if it was all the one package. Mm -hmm. Ad action has been a really good support for the premises. There's things that they do for us behind the scenes that nobody sees. That I think it still would be good for people going through the ad action training to let them know, right, there's rise there for you for mm -hmm. structure. Mm -hmm. They do this, they do that, they'll help you with this and all stuff like that. You know what I mean? It'd be a good thing, I think, for them to continue that sort of bond that they've got with us. We went to Liverpool because we wanted to see what the recovery community was like down there, um, see if we could take some ideas down to them and see if maybe we could bring some ideas back up here and bring them into Glasgow. We wanted to go down to Liverpool. My perception of it was to see what kind of went on down in Liverpool, how ad action ran down there and also we done some meetings and things like that eh, to see what was kind of different down there for up here and if they didn't down there that would maybe work up here and vice versa. So they were learning off us too. The itinerary was quickly put together, but it's really helped for people in Liverpool. Managed to make visits for the afternoon we arrived. That was to be the Brinks Bar. Uh, Tuesday was to be took up with visiting the Ad Action Building, seeing how their groups work, seeing how they promoted their volunteers, where it was, was you know, just a natural progression. The volunteers were kind of handpicked to become recovery champions. There was like three separate groups that went to each different place. Um, we all went for breakfast together at the brink and we all went to Ad Action in Liverpool. But at the other times we broke up and went to different fellowship meetings. Um, and we brought a lot of phone numbers back and a few of them are coming through um, for the NA conference this weekend. So I have got connections through there now. <laughs> I know where you see their map groups, their different styles of group work. Tennis appeared, you know what I mean? There was still another four upstairs, and the look in her face was 
my god. I mean, you just want me ready for Rise and Raid in Liverpool, I don't think. Add action was, I thought, better than here. <laughs> I really, really enjoyed it. I've got to say this, and I, and I think it'd be a really good thing for maybe introducing to Ad Action or introducing to Air Recovery Cafe. It was in the map meeting, you know, it was really powerful. There was a lot of stuff brought out, and you know, a lot of people were able to come in and share, share, really share really honestly. And I think that would be a really good idea if we could look at that. There was a lot of good ideas in the way Liverpool was run, um, for instance, here. Um, you can do the programme and then go right on to being a volunteer. Whereas in Liverpool, you do the programme, then you get um, three months for training on how to be a volunteer. Um, and it teaches you on boundaries, um, confidentiality, all that kind of stuff. And then you become a recovery champion. And champion's quite a strong word, I think. So... It gives the person that's gone for it that wee bit more drive and wants to become a recovery champion. It's like, I'm a recovery champion now, do you know what I mean? Uh, when getting to Liverpool, we discovered that uh, the ad action runs pretty similar to the one up here, but people in ad action, there's not really many volunteers. There's people who are paid by the Royal Princess of Wales Trust uh, for employment, which I thought was really good for people, uh, obviously, in Scotland. They've, you're getting time to kind of train and then you're then paid. It's not all about voluntary. I love doing voluntary because I'm giving back and helping others who helped me. Uh, but for later on in life, for uh, employment, it's something I've definitely looked into uh, if you were employable. We went to visit recovery cafes to see how they were working and we found out that they were far more in front than we were. You know what I mean? We're running it as a business kind of thing. Us here, we tend to give everything away for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, one of the it's a, the biggest kind of recovery cafe they've got organised in Liverpool just now. Uh, in that, they've got similar things going on. No, they've got a bit bigger. They've got their funding kind of stuff. They've got uh, bands that come in. They've got different things going. On. To me, it looked like a pub. When I walked in, totally recovery orientated. This was a dry bar. I've never seen anything like it in my life. It was a totally new experience. Um, they have live bands, they have music, they've got access to IT, you know what I mean? And the food is first class. But the most of the inspiring stories uh, came from the volunteers. Some or different types of recovery. There was addiction problems, there was mental health problems, coupled with uh, prescription drugs. Um, there was people just looking for somewhere to fit in, and everybody I met fitted in at the Brinks Bar. Same post you everywhere else in Liverpool in recovery for recovery. There was an underspend, which is a bit of a miracle in any council nowadays under the Tories. Um, and she'd made so many good contacts and got people to believe in her. You know what I mean? That they decided this underspend could be used for that. And the rest is history, as you say. She, um, lottery funded, private donations, charity donations. They all combined to make what the Brinks Bar is a day. And if you walk in there, it was like just walking into any other place in the city centre. I mean, I think the great thing is, is that people who, who don't see themselves as in recovery use the place for the peace, the calmness. The Brinks Bar was, I'd say, was somebody that didn't believe in ceilings and wouldn't take no for an answer. And when you see what was created just because... That ain't the right word here. Um, no, I mean, perseverance of that person and that dream and that belief. Um, and it was incredible. I think what's ahead for Rise is just growth. I think we're just going to grow stronger and stronger. Um, just by if we were coming back for Liverpool, the, the numbers have almost doubled in Rise. Um, and it's just going to keep going because the, 
mehr stuff, mehr ideas are getting brought to the table, and more people are, are standing up and doing the job and bringing it up to where it could be. The world's your oyster, uh, and uh, I'll be looking for employment uh, in a few months' time. And we'd all try to get to the same stage, be able to be in employment, running your house, paying your bills, doing all these things we want, all this, like just, mm -hmm. this is what we're looking for as well, that's the ultimately the end result, a volunteer hopefully, that see, people see that sometimes we don't even know what special skill is, mm -hmm. and we find that out yeah. through recovery. Where I'm heading to, I'm not there yet, you know what I mean, I've got another year, couple of years yet, but that's where I'm heading, is along that road where I'm in full time employment. Please. Well, I would say, give me money <laughs> to set up my own gym, my own outdoor activities, thing with the people coming through Ad Action, the Wild Venture Trust had it, they're just mm -hmm. the camping and hanging, I'm talking about full scale, everything, climbing, hull walking, swimming, football, doing doing everything, you know what I mean? Basically, and that's where I'm heading and mm -hmm. I will get there. And, it, and it's just annoying me. Can't I, I can't get it renewed. It annoys me that. I want it yesterday. I'd love to set up a, dri a dry bar. Mm -hmm. Joe Maguire trying to set up a dry bar. It's not impossible. As long as you don't drink all the profits. <laughs> I could just picture us. Now you're developing in a dry bar, eh? Come around the idea. In the middle of somewhere in the south side of Glasgow. A dry bar. People would get... Do you know people? And that would just go arms and legs. And then the next minute, you know, your bar's fucking stout. Yeah, I'd say if people can start the first step of recovery. In a dry bar. And the dry bar. Mm -hmm. Welcoming, friendly, honest. But there's also another part of the Brinks bar that you did, we never got to see. And that was people who came in there with addiction issues, well identified herself as having addiction issues, who goes through a short programme before being signposted into relevant agencies who can take the recovery further, whether that be ad action. I don't know the name for it. We've got cats up here. I don't know the, the situation down there. But it, the Brinks Bar Fund itself be getting paid for each person that they help in the recovery because it's seen as the better paying name and getting the person into recovery than having four or five workers managing this person's life. Doctors involved, nurses involved, psychiatrists, psychologists. I mean, everybody's welcome at Brinks Bar. They are so proud of what they've done, what they've achieved, that they wear it on their sleeve. Recovery's my everything. I never had a life and I was totally shut down, physically and mentally. Uh, places like this gave me a chance in my life. Uh, but the funding uh, is hard. We want to grow as people. We want to then work way people in addiction and be paid for that and employment. So we need people like yourselves to help us with the funding, whether that be donations, whether it be just to see how it goes. Uh, as I said, you want your society better, you would then donate money for people like us uh, to start because society with people on alcohol and drugs is a disgrace. And better get somewhere to go and somewhere less be a bit of hope. That wee bit of hope could take them so much just like myself, you know, so I would advise anybody to get a shot, you know, uh, if you could do that then you would see a difference, you know, and that's a good reason. <laughs> <laughs> that's not my... <laughs>